Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar. I used to be a blue bubble iPhone user until I switched to, ladies and gentlemen, a green bubble Android Andy. Now, uh, I I'll be real, I switched back to an Android because as cool as iPhones and Apple stuff is, it's a little bit too restrictive, okay? Do you want to have access to like every power user application available? Well, you're gonna have to go with Android. And uh, generally I find the Android devices to be a little bit more interesting. I mean like, come on, foldable devices, let's be honest, a million cool things that you can do with them that Apple is not taken advantage of. But that being said, ladies and gentlemen, uh, today we're talking about the fact that the United States government, <laughs> yeah, the biggest government in the world is suing Apple. Now, of course, you might have heard about the Apple antitrust case. Well, antitrust is a pretty important thing in the entire world. To give you an idea what antitrust basically is, now, for anybody that follows the tech industry or anybody that knows the history of these big tech companies like Microsoft, Apple, Google, you probably know what the f what antitrust actually means. So to give you an idea, according to the FTC.gov, Antitrust laws, or also known as the Sherman Act, is a comprehensive charter of economic liberty aimed at preserving free and unfettered competition as the rule of trade. So to give you an idea, the Sherman Act outlaws every contract, combination, or conspiracy in restraint of trade. And any monopolization, attempted monopolization, or conspiracy, or combination to monopolize. Long ago, the Supreme Court decided the Sherman Act does not prohibit every restraint of trades. Only those that are unreasonable. So to give you an idea, obviously antitrust law exists in a million shape, ways, and forms. And one of the most popular cases that people refer to is United States versus Microsoft Corporation, where if you actually read through the entire section over here, you can see that the case that the uh, US government is making under the Sherman Act is Microsoft possesses monopoly power in the market for personal computer operating systems. Windows OS are used over 80% of Intel-based PCs the dominant type of PC in the United States. More than 90% of Intel-based PCs are shipped with a version of Windows pre-installed. And if you actually read through this case, it doesn't even feel like a lawyer wrote it. It actually feels like, again, just people looking at the tech industry at the time and making an actual educated analysis as to why Microsoft was basically being the de facto bully king, right? I mean, they even went into things like looking into their actual uh, web browser dominance and whatnot. But obviously, dominance is one thing. The reason antitrust laws exist is to make sure these big tech companies don't become cartels or run a cartel. So basically, the idea here is obviously, if the if these if these laws didn't exist. Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, Google would probably eat up all the competition and just completely run an entire industry. But because of antitrust laws, there are actually, you know, people in place, the government jumps in to prevent these guys from getting just way too powerful, okay? And if they do decide to go beyond buying and eating up the entire competition, they're either forced to break up or they get fined up the ass for doing so. So again, how does this whittle on into Apple? So to give you an idea, Apple has something known as the walled garden. Now the walled garden is basically Apple's, uh, you know, showcase as to basically keeping people locked within their ecosystem. If you buy an iPhone, you're probably going to buy an iPad or a MacBook or something in their other library, just so that all of your devices operate between each other and beyond just the devices, the software that's built into that device is entirely controlled by Apple. So when you buy an iPhone, you don't have the option like Android users to install any app store they want or any application they want outside of Google Play Store. If you buy an iPhone, you're only able to install apps via the App Store. And no, I'm not including the side loading that people mention through other applications. I am strictly saying that most of those, almost everybody who is using an iPhone is typically locked to the App Store. And that's pretty much how it goes. So there have been a couple laws. Apple has basically been getting chewed out by the entire world.
So for instance, the Digital Markets Act all the way over in EU is basically pushing Apple as a gatekeeper, okay? They're basically a big dog and not just their phones, but services like iMessage, okay? So to whittle this onto something more relevant uh, for people watching the average Andy, you might know about the blue bubble, green bubble controversy, right? So when you are an iPhone user and you message another iPhone, through the Messages app, it gets sent as a blue bubble. That's because iMessage is not a traditional messaging service. It's kind of like WhatsApp. It's an actual social media messaging service. Just because you're texting another iPhone, it all happens seamlessly. You message people with blue bubbles, they get a better version of messaging with you, better uh, multimedia gets uh, transmitted, uh, encryption is of a higher standard. It's basically seamlessly better to message between iPhone people. Now, when you message an Android person, we're not part of iMessage, okay? When we message you, we're the green bubble because Apple defaults back to the green bubble. And they don't use any modern, I say modern, but this is 2008 technology like RCS because Apple just falls back to traditional SMS, meaning that all of the media you send looks like dog shit. When you're in a group chat, you're basically ruining the experience for everybody involved, and there's no fucking encryption. So also, it's unsafe to be sending messages, and Apple refuses to do anything about it, and that's why the government has stepped in to basically force them to update their shit. So looking into this right now, you can actually see that when they talk about gatekeepers, what they say in the DMA is it basically means gatekeepers have to allow third parties to interoperate within the gatekeeper's own service in certain specific situations, and then allow their business users to access the data that they generate in the use of the gatekeeper's platform. And of course, what they also say is gatekeepers may no longer treat services and off products offered by the gatekeeper itself more favorably in ranking than similar services or products by third parties. They basically want people to have actual competition and for people to actually update their stuff and have more choice, which is ultimately a good thing. Anybody that's taking Apple's side here is literally being uneducated. This is all designed to make your experience, especially as an Apple user, more enjoyable and more fulfilling and free. Now, because of that DMA, Apple is basically being forced to unlock their app stores and allow third parties only in the countries and regions they're legally forced to. So if you're in the European Union, because of that act, you can one day get Epic Games installed onto your iPhone, run Fortnite all outside Apple's ecosystem because they're basically being forced to by Apple. Now, if you're in the United States, Canada, because the law doesn't reflect that well, you don't get to be part of it. Apple is literally complying to all of this stuff because the government is putting a gun to their head, metaphorically. So at this moment in time, because of laws like that, the US government decided to actually sue Apple a couple days ago. And we're gonna read a few excerpts from that actual case because it's fucking hilarious. So for instance, in this complaint, it starts off like this. In 2010, a top Apple executive emailed Apple's then CEO about an ad for a new Kindle e-reader. The ad began with a woman who was using her iPhone to buy and read books on the Kindle app. She then switches to an Android smartphone and continues to read a books using the same app. The executive wrote to Jobs, one message that can't be missed is that it's easy to switch from iPhone to Android. Not fun to watch. And this is kind of the ethos of Apple, right? It's not difficult to leave the iPhone ecosystem. There's plenty of iPhone, you know, uh, people that will say, I can't switch. I'm already balls deep into this, right? And to think about the ecosystem, how wild it is, is that Apple basically built this platform not because they were selling Mac systems beforehand. In fact, they almost went bankrupt trying to compete with Microsoft or really the general consumer PC market. It wasn't until the iPod dropped and the iPhone dropped that all of Apple's entire fortunes turned around. See, the thing about the iPod is it wasn't just the iPod hardware that sold like hotcakes. It was iTunes. For a long time, when I was growing up, people would purchase an iPod and strictly buy their music from iTunes. They weren't buying it from anything else. They literally bought it from iTunes because it would cost a buck, it was easy to get part of, and you could instantly sync it to your iPods. Now, of course, beyond all of it, when the iPhone dropped, it wasn't like smartphones didn't exist before the iPhone. They did. 
They were just hella clunky compared to Apple's actual iPhone. It gave you a bunch of features and it was actually easily usable. It was intuitive. It was actually an amazing revolutionary product. And that iPhone is what keeps Apple sitting in the gravy. There is, that is the strongest product they have ever made thus far. And no matter what you say, iPhones, if you want a phone that just works, they're not a bad buy, even if they are a tad bit on the expensive side. One of the things they mentioned in this lawsuit is Apple's conduct also stifles new paradigms that threatens Apple smartphone dominance, including the cloud, which could make it easier for users to enjoy high-end functionality on a lower priced smartphone or make users device agnostic altogether. As one Apple manager recently observed, imagine buying a Android for 25 bucks at a garage sale and it works fine. And you have a solid cloud computing device. Imagine how many cases like that there are. So what they're basically saying over here is that, or alleging, is that Apple will actually stifle their software, make it just so iPhone appears superior to their actual people. When in reality, if they enabled a couple pieces of technology like RCS, the messaging experience between Androids and iPhones would be a lot better. But Apple doesn't want that to happen. They don't want people to think that switching to the other side or going to the other side of the Iron Curtain or goddamn defecting in this case, is something that is possible, okay? That's literally what's being alleged here. And again, if you're an iPhone user, you should actually want Apple to make their devices better compatible with everything else around you. It just makes the experience better. It doesn't make it unsafe. Don't listen to Apple. Adopting latest technologies is not unsafe. It should just be something that they should do. So where it gets even wilder about this stuff too, is they highlight five examples of Apple using their mechanisms to suppress technologies that would actually increase competition between smartphones. So what they mention are super apps providing a user with broad functionality in a, in a single app. Super apps can improve smartphone competition by providing a consistent user experience that can be ported across devices. Suppressing super apps harms all smartphone users, including the Apple users as well. Then they have cloud streaming game apps provide users with a way to play computing intensive games in the cloud. Cloud streaming games can improve smartphone competition by decreasing the importance of expensive hardware for accomplishing high compute tasks. Then they mention the messaging applications that allow you to communicate with everyone around you. Messaging apps that work equally well across all smartphones can improve competition amongst them by allowing users to switch phones without changing the way they communicate with friends, family, and others. And that's true. Like me and my wife, Jen, she has an iPhone, I have an Android, okay? We used to use iMessage. Now we use apps like Signal, which allow Android and iOS users to have better messaging experiences between each other, all without Apple basically ruining the experience just between devices. Then they always mention things like smartwatches and then digital wallets as well. But where this lawsuit gets actually hilarious is point 90. Okay, so the funniest point here is point 90. In addition to degrading the quality of third-party messaging apps, Apple affirmatively undermines the quality of rival smartphones. For example, if an iPhone user messages a non-iPhone user in Apple Messages, the default app on iPhone, then the text appears to the iPhone user as a green bubble and incorporates limited functionality. The conversation is not encrypted, videos are pixelated and grainy, and users cannot edit messages or see typing indicators. This signals to users that rival smartphones are lower quality, because the experience of messaging friends and families who do not own iPhones is worse, even though Apple, not the rival smartphone, is the cause of that degraded user experience. Many non-iPhone users also experience social stigma, exclusion, and blame for breaking chats where other participants own iPhones. The effect is particularly powerful for certain demographics, like teenagers, where the iPhone share is 85%. This social pressure reinforces switching costs and drives users to continue buying iPhones, solidifying Apple's dominance, not because Apple made its phone better, but because it has made communicating with other phones worse. True, actually true. Now, I think if you stigmatize people for the green bubble, you're a fucking shallow bitch, okay? Simple as that.
But unfortunately, it's a piece of shallowness that exists, okay? Now, I don't give a shit if I walk into a group chat and I'm the green bubble. I will continue to use my Android device because it is a genuinely better device, in my honest opinion. But that being said, the fact that I am ruining a group chat is not the fault of my device. My device can participate in those group chats and a lot of those iMessage features. The only hindrance is, is Apple. And of course, this is something that obviously Google has constantly been pushing Apple to fix constantly. If you go to android.com, uh, get the message, this is an actual campaign that's been going on for a while. And it touches upon these same issues, blurry messages, shitty group chats, and just terrible messaging experiences. And all that needs to happen, literally all that needs to occur is Apple enables or works with Google to enable RCS, which is rich communication services, which by the way, is an industry standard, okay? If Apple started doing that, most of these issues would be alleviated. And the iMessage experience, even if you have green bubbles, would be far more usable than you could imagine. The only reason green bubbles suck is because Apple refuses to update. And they refuse to catch up with the times and intentionally make the experience worse to make their devices look better. And in some regions of the world, Apple actually has to enable something known as RCS, which is coming sometime to iPhone in the year 2024. And why is Apple doing this? It's not because they want to in any way, it's because they are legally being required from my understanding and belief by numerous regions around the world. So yeah, iPhone, or sorry, Apple is getting sued by the US government. And honestly, I'm actually on the US government side over here because their actual arguments do make a lot of sense. Apple exists as sort of a gatekeeper to having a good experience, not just for other people interacting with their devices, but for people who are Apple users themselves. Look, if you like iPhone, cool. And you might be wondering, Muda, what if this makes iPhone unsafe? Apple's walled garden keeps me safe. The reality is, if Apple allows you to sideload applications, you don't have to sideload an application if you want total safety. You can actually get security by sticking purely to the App Store. All that does is give actual people the choice, which is the most important thing. And when we're talking about messaging services, what is the issue with adopting technologies that allow you to interact with all brands all operating systems properly using services like RCS. Look, at the end of the day, iMessage is never gonna be opened up. That's a proprietary thing that Apple will safeguard till their dying fucking breath. But if you're getting green bubbles, at least update the standard to make sure that interacting with other people isn't a mess. Look, at the end of the day, it's entirely up to Apple if they want people to join in or not. But I think this is when the government has to get involved because if Apple's not gonna change and update their stuff to catch up with 2008 standards, then this is when the government has to step in and basically force them to unlock their Fisher Price phone and take us into the modern day and age. But yeah, apparently uh, the US government has taken them to task over the blue green bubbles. And honestly, it is the funniest shit that I've read in quite a long time. But ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. Apple seems to be fucked, but honestly, a company as large as them can probably keep this going for a fair bit of time. But they're not only going up against the United States, they're going up against the Chinese, they're going up against the European Union, every major region that they're playing in. And that <laughs> is a fucking sight to behold. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out.